Hello, welcome to the Nintendo Bros Podcast. This is Pete. And this is Derek. And we are here to talk about Xbox. <laughs> yes, we had we did the PS5 showcase. Now we're doing Xbox. And the time before we talked about Xbox. So we should be called the Xbox Bros at this point. <laughs> I'm sure some commenters will give us some flack for that, but I'm sure next time though we'll be talking about Nintendo because they you know, Sony had their kind of May, June, E3 showcase, Xbox, Microsoft had theirs, Nintendo's going to come up soon. But yeah, for I, listeners today, Xbox it is. I'm predicting next Tuesday is my blatant guess. I hope, God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Derek, um, you know, some of the online discourse for this Xbox showcase has been that it is one of the best showcases of all time. I heard that too. Not just Xbox, but any showcase. Yeah. And I guess the thing... I, I've been thinking about it a lot because I think there's... Before we jump into things, there's almost two ways to approach this showcase. Are we approaching it as a selling point uh, for Xbox, the console, and the future of them, you know, becoming a prominent console, which right now they're, they're floundering hard? Or are we approaching it like Microsoft, the third-party American publisher, you know? Yeah, I think we're still kind of up in the air in that one. Like, I think we're kind of in between on... Like, I know what you're saying. Like, I, I just don't think there's a way to kind of pick one or the other to assess this on. Totally. I mean, I, I will say, though, um, in terms of them being just an overall publisher of games, not considering the Xbox and their strategy there, um, they are definitely, I would say, the str- one of the absolute strongest publishers there is. T- totally. Um, mega force here and also they are um, probably the best American publisher full stop oh for, for for sure they have like some of the biggest best American studios of all time yeah I mean it's, it's like I guess you could make an argument for Sony but I don't know this is this they just have a gar- gargantuan amount of massive games now I mean, just the, them owning Call of Duty and World of Warcraft and Bethesda, like like they just they and Halo, like they have a juggernaut of a lineup. The one thing I will yes. say is about you know you, you mentioned that this is considered one of the best um, kind of showcases of all time, which I do agree as far as um, games kind of shown and and it, a lot of it looks good. But I will say just to briefly touch on a lot of the dates are twenty twenty five. So, you know, and I know so that I'm hoping that those games actually do hit 2025 and then we'll have a strong next year. But really this year, there wasn't, wasn't as many 2024 announcements as I kind of expected there to be. But we can get into that as we kind of go through the games. Yeah, because at the same time, I mean, there's two, there's two ways to look at that. Yes, on one hand, they didn't have like an explosive announcement for this year, like sometimes Nintendo does mm-hmm. or sometimes Sony does. But their lineup is still pretty damn strong, even when you consider just Xbox exclusives. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, but anyways, let's let's jump into it chronologically, Derek. I, I kind of t- I have notes for each game. Like I took notes as I watched it. Okay, I have some mental notes, so I'll, I'll contribute what I can. Okay, so the, the first thing up was they showed off Call of Duty Black Ops Six, mm-hmm. um, which I'm not a huge fan of. But the, the actually to me, this was one of the biggest announcements of the entire show. I know it was kind of rumored slash leaked, but they announced it's coming to Game Pass on day one. Yeah, that's huge. That that's a big deal for someone like me because I know they were on the fence about it. But it's I'm now 100 percent going to play this game. I'm 100 percent going to play the zombies mode. It's cross play, so I can play with my friends who have PlayStation. Like, I, it's it went from me. It's it's basically saying, do I have to spend 90 dollars on something that I want to play but don't really want to play? And I think it's going to be like a really fun single player, fun zombie mode. Like it, it seems like it'll be a good, a really solid game. So I mean, this is just like, I mean, all things considered, this is an exclusive game that I'll play and not have to pay for. So I was like, actually, really happy. To me, me too. Like I, I think of you know picking up games like um, Evil West or um, the Finals or um, what's that dinosaur game that I keep forgetting the name of? Exo Primal. Exo Primal. Like like there are a lot of Game Pass games where I'm like, oh, I'll give this a whirl and play for a couple hours. So Call of Duty is going to be like that, except they have hundreds of millions of dollars of, of you know, development <laughs> for this game. So It's a triple-A game. Like, that's I mean. not like, fooled. Yeah. Like, so I'm just saying it's like, oh, I get to play, like, the same kind of idea of me dabbling in a multiplayer game, except this one's like, in a lot of ways, you could argue this is like one of the best multiplayer franchises of all time. Um, 
So like even my friend Andrew, who plays almost no video games, like he for sure will pick this up like or just play it with me and I'll play it with you and like I'll play it with any friend that has an Xbox or like it just kind of you, I, you nailed it on the head where I would never buy this game. I, I buy one maybe every five or six years, but you right. sure as hell will believe that I'll play every single time a new one comes out if it's free. Yes, and it, I think it sets I don't I think it sets a precedent that Call of Duty will be continually coming to Xbox. Yeah, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. I think they'll make their money on DLC packs and, you know, all the microtransactions and things like that. But I think this is, a, I think this is probably in, in a lot of ways, the most significant announcement bo- in terms of their bottom line from the entire show. Oh, a hundred percent agreed. I mean, this is, this is a reason that as weird as it sounds, I, I mean, we can get, we can go on all sorts of tangents here, but if Xbox just becomes a game pass machine, Mm-hmm. Where every single Xbox game goes to PlayStation or, or Nintendo Switch, and they don't really have those exclusives. Having game, just having Game Pass might be worth it. You know what I mean? Like one hundred percent with Call of Duty. Um, so I, I'm actually yeah, it's a game I'll play. I'm excited yeah. to play it. Honestly, um, if you just put Call of Duty and Diablo Four together, right? Like that alone covers a whole year of game for a lot of people. Absolutely, and I know yeah. with Diablo Four, they're they're even giving the DLC for free. Mm-hmm. On Game Pass, not free. But I, I don't think they... I really do not think they will do that for Black Ops 6. No, I don't think so either. You're right. Um, anyways, yeah. I, I, just before we move on to the next game, I think um, it was awkward seeing Phil Spencer out on the stage. Yeah, I thought it was weird. Every single time they had a live person speak, I just felt it was so weird. But him especially. Yeah, and he has he does this weird thing with his hands where it's like... <laughs> Does his, did his hands get in some sort of injury where like he can't really control the motor functions on them? Because he's he kind of flaps them out and in and out and in and, and, and I can't unsee it. But <laughs> beyond that, I, I gotta watch that again. Uh, I think it, it, I mean there's some other CEO type people that spoke during this that look that absolutely were terrible. And I really think this era of like seeing the CEO is maybe blase. Well, yeah, I, I will say, um, I, I will yeah. say though that. As far as showcases go and, like, thinking of old E3 and have a format, like, I, I give a little, you know, kudos to the Microsoft Showcase uh, on Sunday because it really was, besides for those few minutes of, of talking, was game after game after game after game. There was no, like, stupid ridiculousness, you know, like, they just, it was a lot better. Like, you think of, um, what was that mobile game that was shown at the Summer Games Fest? Like, like there's no, like... There was no fat as far as the trailers went. It was pretty solid as far as game after game after game. It, it was overall a very great lineup of like what they chose to show and when. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and the next game, um, Doom Dark Ages. Uh, what did you think about this, Derek? Yeah, super stoked. Um, I know it's also coming day one to PS5. Um, I loved Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. This is a day one. question is really... I think I'll get this on Game Pass, but I, there's a part of me that wants to buy it on PS5. Um, but I think ultimately I'll, I'll just play it on Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, ult- part of me does want it on PS5 as well. I have a PS5 now. Um, so I can have the adaptive triggers and use motion controls when I'm in gyro aiming. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's worth $90. Um, no, wait, that's, game, that's how I feel, yeah. The game itself looks awesome. Um, I think this is... You know, as far as new announcements with gameplay, the best showing of the whole thing, because it just looks polished, it looks fun, it looks like they've expanded on the ideas from Doom Eternal in the right way. Like, there was big battlefields with lots of enemies. Yeah, uh, it looks as, awesome. As far as the list of games um, from this showcase that I'm most excited for, this would definitely be in the top three. And, and Oh, yeah, and I think so for me, too. And I'm, I'm hoping, it looks pretty done, I'm hoping that'll be early 2025. Yeah, definitely this and Fragpunk are the big ones. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're joking, but I actually really thought Fra- I th- Fragpunk was really cool to me. We'll talk about We'll it get like, to Fragpunk. Yeah. There's a whole side topic about that, too, about Concord versus Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, Doom looks freaking awesome. Um, I mean, I do feel like, I'm just going to on a side note here, if Microsoft wasn't bringing this to PS5, and if Microsoft was like all these games, if, if I had the notion that none of these games were ever going to go to PS5, this showcase would have been a lot stronger in terms of, wow, Xbox is bringing the, the, the heat. Well, a good chunk of these are actually multi-platform, right? They just didn't say it. But, I mean, they also came out after the show and said, we're going to be bringing lots of games to PS5. So we can almost assume that a lot, like games that we didn't even expect to, like, um, you know, maybe Perfect Dark will, maybe Indiana Jones will, maybe Starfield will. So 
is anything like is, you know it's a, it's a weird space right because I, I, I think the best indicator of how long until they put those games on or which games or how many really is going to be watching the xbox console sales after this holiday they're going to uh, release those we're going to talk about them later but the the three new consoles this holiday and if again their sales are just like falling behind they're just going to pump they, they just can't support these games with how much development cost they are on on their dying system and pc like they're going to have to put them on console on ps5 i think i mean P, pc is also a huge market but i just I think we're going to see more and more of these games uh, in 2025 be put over to the PS5. I mean, it is that famous old story of like Nintendo should go third party when they weren't doing well with GameCube and Nintendo should go third party when they weren't doing well with the Wii U. And like, it was the same thing. It's like, oh, if your big Mario game is only going to sell this. Yeah, the only thing I could I could imagine is let's say, you know, Game Pass and, and Xbox rides this next three years out and they hit the the next gen, let's say, with like just a disgusting lineup of like, you know, Call of Duty's only on Xbox now. And this is like, you know what I mean? Like if, if they not knock it out in the sense of slamming so many exclusives on the, the launch of the next Xbox console, I could see them kind of salvaging and getting their console back in that space. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that they don't just say Doom Dark Ages coming first on Xbox. And you get it five months early on Xbox. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we can talk about their strategy all day. Let's just stick to the games. Um, okay. Because, I mean, every game we can really get uh, into yeah, a long yeah. strategy discussion. Agreed. Um, after that, they showed State of Decay 3. I, this looked like a... I've never played a State of Decay game. Have you? I haven't, but there was no... It didn't really even seem like there was gameplay. It was just a CG trailer, as far as I remember. And... Um, it, to me, it sounds kind of weird. It almost looked like it was trying to copy The Last of Us. I don't know if you got that vibe too, but it... I did get that vibe, yes. Okay, it was kind of just like trying to pull out a lot, The Last of Us. And, you know, what? if I saw some gameplay, I might actually be like, oh, I, I'd be down for a, The Last of Us, you know, an Xbox version of it. And I've never played State of Decay 1 and 2, so maybe I'm totally off there. Um, but this at least piqued my interest. I'd be down for a fun zombie game, a more kind of... Um, dark and gritty serious game but again there's nothing with multiplayer too is the big yeah. one yeah but again just nothing shown like I, I don't like cg trailers yeah i mean it looked like there was areas that kind of mimicked gameplay but it, it didn't look like real gameplay so if there's no hud on the screen it's like it's not gameplay at all or or like proper camera angle <laughs> right it like well like, yeah exactly yeah it does seem like the uh, industry is sorely lacking a game that a third person shooter that you play cooperatively, player versus enemy. I mean, obviously there's Hell Divers, but like you know, there needs to be more of these games. I wish so, there was, I wish there was like a really good third person, two two or three player, can't like co op campaign game. Like imagine like a The Last of Us, but like that kind of game, but co op the whole way through. I agree. Yeah, like Resident Evil Five almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly that exact kind of thing. Yeah, so I agree. I've always dreamed of having a Mario game that was you had to play a Mario and Luigi. Oh my like god, could, could not. Could you imagine playing Mario and Luigi like a, a huge open world together? That'd be awesome. Yeah, or even just like big up levels, but like you had to do this like partner platforming mm -hmm. to do. You know, it'd be, I mean, it limit the sales. I'm sure a little bit, but um, uh, I don't know. Anyways. Um, after that, they showed Shar Starfield Shattered Space. You missed Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Sorry, this was the biggest flop of the show. Uh, Dragon <laughs> Age, what's it called? Dragon Age Vanguard or something? The Veil Guard. So I'm seeing a lot of hate on this online. I know they're going to show actual gameplay in like a week. They showed um, they showed like ten seconds today, so it's kind of funny. I was I've been following it, and basically today they said, "Hey, like our bad, like here's here's like ten seconds of the gameplay. Stay tuned for I think it's tomorrow actually." Mm. So I think people are like almost making fun of them. So what? There's half the people that are saying, "Wow, the ten seconds they showed looks a lot better than the trailer they did," and a lot of people are like making fun of them, like, "How bad is your marketing to realize that your trailer is so bad that you had to like patch it a day later and kind of like do some fix work." You know what I mean? Like people, you know what? Th this trailer was so bad that I thought it was a, like a mobile spinoff. To me, it was like so tone, like off tone. Like it didn't fit the tone of Dragon Age at all. Like I, I just, this is not how I thought of Dragon Age. I've never even played them really. But when I've seen friends play it, it's a lot closer to like a Baldur's Gate three or like a lot more serious. And um, this felt felt very like you're you're right, mobile, cartoony, like 
like, kind of like how he talked about Concord being like exactly. the uh, like the guards of the galaxy, Gar- yeah, guards of the galaxy, group of misfits, yeah. yeah. And I um, just yeah did not work for me at all. What a terrible style. I mean, one of the comments I saw about this game was goodbye Bioware. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, but it is coming this year, so I mean they have a lot of work to do over the next, let's say, five months. Um, but again, I think there's gonna be the, the 10, 20 seconds I saw of it's just literally someone walking in a town, but it does look a lot better than the trailer made it seem. So I'm excited to see more gameplay tomorrow, just to give it a. a, a I think it deserves a second chance. Um, so we'll see. It seems like, uh, and also it seems like it's primed up to be that game that everyone's gonna hate on. Yeah, I, I I could see this game getting a you know a sixty six, and it's like th- that's this ne- the the final game this year. That's like the blunder. You know, how there's always like three like or the, four the blunders every Suicide year. Suicide Squad, yeah, yeah, the next Suicide Squad of the year, which actually didn't sell that badly. Oh really? Okay. I mean, it sold. It's in the top, I believe, twenty of sales for the year, but it's like way less than it needed to, being a ten year development cycle. Yeah. True. Uh, anyways, after that they showed Starfield Shattered Space, which is an expansion coming this year for... It looks like a kind of story expansion. Hmm. Uh, it actually looks cool, I think. Is this free, or is it on Game Pass free, it, or is it... It'll be free on Game Pass. Okay. I believe. Um, but I'm glad that... I, I really hope for Starfield that it does kind of correct course from its launch. Like, kind of becomes the No Man's Sky, the Fallout 76, mm-hmm. where, um... You know, pe- people appreciate it. I think the game is still fundamentally broken in my mind. I think the idea of, like, the Bethesda exploration through load screens, it's it just, I don't think I'll ever get into this game. I think people were, were upset about this because the patch that just came out, I, I like, don't quote me, it might have been a different game people were talking about, but I'm pretty sure it was this one, where there's a, one of the new missions is locked behind, like, a $7 paywall. And people were like, this is bullshit that you have to pay $7 to, to play, um one of the missions on this free de- update. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, like there's something about it, but yeah, I'm not a yeah, I mean, guy. It, it, it kind of feels like an obligatory thing to show, just like the next thing they showed, which was Fallout 76 <laughs> expansion storyline. Yeah, there's right of the wave of Fallout, really. Yeah, it's just kind of like, okay, we're also going to see Elder Scroll online later, and we can just breeze through that. Like, it's a th- in Sea of Thieves. Like, these things that they always do kind of an update on, and it's yeah. like, and that's okay. okay. But honestly, that's okay. Every, even Nintendo does those. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I was surprised about was like, where's the Redfall uh, update? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? Some people did expect to see a Halo Infinite update. Some kind of, you know, they did promise campaign updates that they never gave. <laughs> like, the, yeah. There are things that maybe they could have done with that one. Um, but anyways, no, no Halo in this whole showcase, which is interesting. Um, after that, they actually did show an interesting game called Expedition 33. Mm-hmm. I don't know who the developer of this is, uh, or if it's exclusive, or I think it's a Microsoft game, right? It's it's not. It's third party because it's coming, I believe it's coming to PS5 as well. It's made by a French, I want to say it's a French developer. Okay. Um, I thought this look, looked really cool. Like to, It kind of looks like the Western version of Persona, where it's like that, turn, <laughs> turn-based... Why are, you, why are you laughing? You literally stole the words out of my mouth. That's exactly how I, I interpreted it. I was going to say the Western persona. I even typed it to our friend Andy. I said, oh, wow. I, I said, this is the Western persona. Like, yesterday. Yeah. Maybe maybe I saw your comment and subconsciously I'm just copying it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, it looks cool. Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of the game I I would play almost. Like, this is the kind of the, the RPG I would play. To me, this is this was the game of the show for me as far as new and looks really interesting. I think the I'm itching for a nice turn-based RPG kind of like that, and it looks cool. The story seems really interesting. I don't know if you read anything about the story. Basically, there's this evil. They're called the Paintress or something, mm-hmm. and they they paint a number. And if you if you're that age or you turn that age, you die. So all these so like she's at 33, and that's why it's called Expedition 33, because these people that are like 31 and 32 are trying to like stop her before they turn 33. Um, oh, that does sound cool. Yeah, it's kind of a, a, a unique spin. The one thing I'll say is people were talking about the development um, or the developer studio size. And I think it's like 15 to 50 people. So this just because of how good this game looks graphically and how small the studio is, I wouldn't expect this game to be a long RPG, which might, might be better or worse. But I could see it kind of being like, I would say almost like an Evil West in scope. Where it's very, you know... Oh, I'm linear. into that. Like a 10-hour-ish game. Yeah, I'm, bet, I'm betting it could be something like that. Who knows in the end? Um, maybe they've been working on this for years. Um, but yeah, I, this see, is... The, 
yeah. It's the exact same story as uh, the movie Logan's Run. Like, they turn 30 and <laughs> that's the end of their life. Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. Anyways, um, super excited for it. This is game of the show for me. And it will be on Game Pass, correct? Uh, yep. Okay, I think, mo- I think honestly, most of these are. I think there's, like, maybe a, a handful that aren't. But, um, yeah, I, I, wow, game of the show for you. That's... Some, that's uh, to me, I, I wasn't sure if it was Microsoft, so part of me was like, oh, 2025, so we'll see in 2028. And, you know, you, I feel like there's a lot of these games where I've just seen for years, and I don't know when they're going to come out, and I just they kind of just wash over me. This game really could not come, could could be delayed still, though. It, like, it's a small development team, especially if they got a lot of hype for it right now, which it seems like they are. I think they might look and readdress and say, hey, guys, we need to put, you know, more time and effort in this because we have a, a good concept on our hands. Yeah, and got, I mean, I think it got a lot of really positive reception from this showcase. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, so next they showed South of Midnight, which they revealed last year. It's kind of that uh, swampy, you know, Louisiana kind of bay- bayou crocodile fighting game. Yeah, um, with that with that kind of 20 frame per second style. Yeah, so they showed it this year with a little kind of a gameplay slice. What did you think about this, Derek? <sighs> you know, like, I think the 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 location is really cool and i think the even the 20 frames or whatever frames it is per second style is cool and i think the the music was good but when you actually got to the gameplay one i felt like there was no weight or impact when she was using her combat skills and i felt that it was one of those games where like oh you walk into an area and then all of a sudden these these vines grow around you you're in an arena it's like very bordered i hated that i yeah. agree and um they're s- kind of like weirdly linear. Like the whole game's linear with like maybe little offshoots to collect orbs. Yeah, and um you know, like something about the the cutscenes being that very kind of cool style and then kind of like having a weird merge of a normal game and that style as the gameplay felt really jarring to me. Um, I, th- I don't think the game I, I don't like the 20 frame how the, the the player character is like 20 frames a second the girl yeah but, but the like world the rest of the game is like 50 60 that, that's what I mean it's, it's weird hybrid like I think they should have done all 20 frames everything or they shouldn't shouldn't have done it at all yeah um, anyways I, I saw someone compare this kind of like to to I think it's called Kena the Bridge of Spirits I don't know if you played yes. that game no but you did on PlayStation yeah, yeah and I, I like that game but it's kind of like those that game where it is big and open world but it's also like your very linear down paths um but and then, how, how is it a linear path and it's big and open world like it's like it's not that. a big open world where it's like it's it's like it feels like there's this big mountain you're climbing and it feels like there's like this waterfall in the town but like really it's it's like kind of almost like the magic of the trailer where when you actually play it it's like oh it's you really can't go that far and it's like oh it's only this like one little area that's the town and then you go up a, a path up the mountain and it's like you're really just yeah, on the path 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 cutscene path yeah. path cutscene yeah uh, <laughs> and you know I, I wish games like let us know these things like the structure of it like we we're trying to like glean the structure of these games yeah um, I wish they just kind of told us oh yeah it's a I mean I guess it doesn't sound good to say linear game nowadays yeah. in a marketing it, um, but it, it gets confusing it gets tricky too because like you know there's times we've discussed where we're so tired of those checklist open worlds and now right now we're kind of criticizing the opposite of it being super, super linear like I'm okay with it being super linear I think the biggest issue for me was just like the combat just didn't look very fun it looked like just combat we've seen a hundred million times um, totally if they, I, add, I, if they do something cool like very like oh this is a like, because again, I th- I find the environment, the place they're they're in, like that Bayou, Florida Gator kind of like that's cool. Like, make the powers relative and unique in that kind of sense, um, as opposed to like it looks like she just like has magic. It's like, well, <laughs> we've had a million games with magic. Why don't you do something interesting? I also found the story and the characters to be a little bit cringy. Uh, I'm, I'm again, I'm I'm so tired of like. It's such a tired idea of like, oh, these smarmy characters. She's you know wise. Yeah, these little animal. quips. Yeah, it's it's quippy, and I it's I hate that. Um, and I kind of, I kind of yearn for a game that just like starts and you're already playing, and they don't have these cutscenes. I can tell this game's gonna be full of cutscenes, mm-hmm. and I'm just not really for that. And I, I kind of just wish the game was like simpler, if you will. And uh, I, I kind of I took two notes here. I wrote this looks like the most seven out of ten game ever. That's what I wrote. <laughs> Um, and I also wrote a note that's kind of said it, it to me, this kind of game, it looks beautiful. Like the graphics mm-hmm. and the environments are really well designed. And it seems like a lot of these Microsoft games or yeah, Western games, 
they focus on the graphics and the characters and these these things before gameplay. Gameplay or, game, or even animation. Yeah, because the gameplay didn't look that amazing. And it's kind of like, oh, you, you, I'm sure you had a focus group that said, yeah, this is a cool new environment. You know, it's a female lead and it's smarmy side characters that are animals. And she has to, you know, collect the things to stop the magic, whatever. But like it's it's all kind of focus tested and they have the best graphic teams and best, best animation teams. But then you get to the actual gameplay. It's like, oh, look, you can like fly over the swamp here. Like, I'm sure that'll be cool, but but not when you're in a linear pathway. And oh, look, yeah. um, we're going to fight this cool big tree monster because look, look, that was a really wicked drawing that guy did. Our, our illustrator he hired, but not when the fighting is like the same rote gameplay in, in an enclosed area. Mm-hmm. It, it in the, like I want I want to use the environment with combat. Like I I, I this, to me this feels so old fashioned in a way. Like it's almost like yeah to make the arenas PS2 yeah. level. Yeah, it's just kind of like if you're gonna do that, you better have some souls like crazy awesome battling. And this kind of looks like a yeah, Ubisoft I, 2005 game. Like I kind of think of um, I know you haven't really played them too much, but like Spider Man one and two on the the PS4 PS5. Mm-hmm. It's like they have a lot of they have a lot of moments where it's like there are those big set pieces throughout the city and like the helicopter flying or like you're, you're hunting down venom and you're swinging after him. It's like, I would love if, for example, in this game, it's like there's a giant gator and he's like crashing through the, the swamp and the buildings. And you're like, you're like zooming after him. And it's like, you're actually in the world as opposed to like, Oh, you f- f- see the enemy vines appear around you. You're stuck in this thing till you fight him. It's like, yeah. And yeah. there was, there was a moment where she like jumps off the church and the gator kind of crashes the church and it's all a cutscene. And I'm kind of like, do you remember in playing uh Sega, uh, I don't know if you ever played Sonic Adventure one or two, mm, a, bit, a bit of one, but it's like when you're running away from a giant whale, destroying the, uh, the dock behind you, like you're playing. Mm-hmm. And when you're running away from a truck, destroying the whole city, like you're playing. So like, why do you take the most fun, awesome element and then put it into a cutscene? Like, let me play that, even if it's simple. Even if it's a... Like, even like Crash Bandicoot. Like, when you're running away from someone yeah, chasing you. Yeah, Like, make the gameplay simple, but, like, let me be engaged with it. Like, I'm here to play a game, not watch your two-bit cartoon story. Yeah. Uh, so, I have no hope for this game. <laughs> I, I, I have I have low expectations right now, but I'm... Just because of the setting, I'm, I'm willing to see more and see kind of how it shapes up to be. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe they'll have some cool weapons in combat. Maybe the game's completely open. Who knows? Maybe... Or maybe the game's like cool and challenging in a way, mm-hmm. like I, uh, but it, it certainly didn't show that well for me. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, the next was World of Warcraft something coming in August. Do you care about this? It was PC only. I didn't know what this was. I don't care. The only thing I, that I was thought it would be really cool, and some people talked about this too, is it seemed like it might have been a Warcraft four, and it also seemed like it could have been a World of Warcraft coming to Game Pass or or to Xbox. Which I thought would also be really, really cool. But it ends up being an expansion to World of Warcraft, like the next expansion, which for people that are big on WoW, that's awesome. Like all the power to you. Like it's obviously doing well, but I'm just not a WoW player. I'm really surprised they won't bring World of Warcraft to consoles. That'd be huge. I, I, imagine if they said it's coming to Xbox on Game Pass, only on Xbox on Game Pass even, um, would be massive. No kidding. I feel like Xbox, like, they have the hand. They just aren't playing their cards right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's a great expression. But anyways, next uh, was a game that I can't wait to play on PS5, which was Metal Gear Solid 3, the remake. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Delta, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this looks good. I put, as a note here, 20 frames per second in question marks. Um. But I think that's just a demo. It, it looks like... I see some people being disappointed because it looks like a kind of a straight remake of number three. Like, it's not the it's Resident not, Evil 4. Yeah. It's more like a um, Paper Mario. <laughs> bad bad reference. But it's like just a graphical upgrade. Yeah, like, I didn't play three, and I know it's considered one of the best ones. I'm excited. But, like, you know, people are even talking about how there are some quality of life features in four or some of the animation or abilities that you can do in five that they're like, oh, man, like, the fact that this one doesn't have it is going to feel really dated. Um, it does look great, but I, I, you know, I agree with you about the 20 frames. Some people were even talking about some of the animations just feel very disjointed and stiff. And, um, uh, Which again, is, is interesting, though. I saw that same complaint, but that it really goes to show how talented Kojima's team was. And also that... It, it's not like next generation power in the Unreal Engine 5 is enough to be like, animation is different. 
Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you can have a really well, good animation from an older game if the talent was there. And where I just thought that was kind of a, it's almost an interesting anecdote about animation not really being about power. Mm hmm. Um, cause it, by all intents and purposes, it's a great looking game. I think it's running on unreal five. Yeah. Um, I think so too. the faces and everything look great, but like, it's just the artistic style might well, not land the right way. It's not, you don't think it's running on the Kojima engine? I really don't know. I mean, this looks like it's, I, I don't think, I think this is made by like a Konami outsourcing it to someone. Okay. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like completely unreal five. I, I mean, as far as I know, the Kojima, those, the engine that made, Metal Gear Solid, like, 1, 2, and 3 are pretty baked into the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And people say number 5. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. The, the one thing I will say that's interesting, you know, we're talking about what games are coming to Game Pass. This one, as far as I can see, isn't. isn't. And what's interesting, too, is, you know, we just had the, the Sony showcase. And most people would argue that Metal Gear is a pretty Sony-PlayStation kind of collaborative group right like a partnership for sure so it's like oh man like this isn't coming to game pass but it's interesting that metal gear solid is you know being promoted by xbox like it's kind of a nice grab as far as xbox saying like you know we've got to show off more of our japanese studios coming to 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 xbox like this is a a good get as far as promotion in a way i just think it's kind of it rings hollow when the game will probably come out in so long from now and people will still associate it with ps5 it just seems like they kind of paid for the marketing or they made a deal with Konami for the marketing. Yeah, that's true. I, I just, it's still nice to see that, I think. Yeah. And I mean, I think, I think I still want this. I mean, even though it's, it is kind of a, it's kind of just a direct remake. Let's be honest. Like it's not, some people were hoping like it blew open the gates on what like Resident Evil 4 was, made the world much bigger. And it, it looks like it's not going to be that. It's going to be that kind of linear going through little, little sections game, but it's, still a great game and they brought back the original voice actors and i think they're actually just using the same voice samples like i've never really played any metal gear like i've I've tiptoed on a bit of them i even own five and barely played it um i think it's actually still in the plastic wrapping to be honest but this is the one i've really wanted to play and i just never had a chance to because i I forget what system was it on ps3 ps2 ps2 i just never and I, I, didn't you watch me play it because I, I remember getting it for christmas on ps2 and playing i remember it i think i watched you play it a little bit the one i remember you playing a lot was a gamecube one um twin snakes with like yeah. psycho mantis and stuff but i, I remember a little bit of this one because i remember some of the bosses in it um but i always wanted to play metal gear solid 3 i think like that was the one that i always wanted to play so i actually am really excited to play this one it, it's uh, straight up it's one of my favorite games of all time yeah uh, nice. It's on my top ten list. I, I absolutely love this game, and uh, but to me, it's it's such a Sony thing. I, I really want to play on PlayStation, hmm. and also Metal Gear Solid was always a game that really utilized the controller in interesting ways. Hmm. Um, like it was one of the first games to use like the pressure sensitive buttons of the PS2. Hmm. That's why on GameCube it like didn't work as well because um, you, you you had to hold down the X button uh, or the square button, and like if you press really hard, you'd shoot. But if you like slightly let go, it, it released like it was it was u- using those features. Hmm. Um, and so I kind of want really want to play it with the um, special rumble and the uh, haptic, haptic feedback. feedback. Yeah. The rumble's really awesome. Like, oh, I know. Like, the, on Astrobots, like it's such a cool feeling. It, it's a next level. Like it's a next level beyond this, the switch mm-hmm. HD rumble. Like it's it's so awesome. So definitely going to be a PS5 game. Uh, thanks, Xbox. <laughs> Um, I was I was hoping this would come this year, but uh, I guess not. I don't even know if it'll come twenty twenty five. At this point, I don't know either. But they showed enough where I can see like a late twenty twenty five. Yeah, I can see that too. I think out of all the games we've talked about so far, the only one that really strikes me as perhaps perhaps a first half of the year twenty twenty five is Doom. Me too. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Like even South of Midnight, that's like that's like September, if not twenty twenty six. South of Midnight Night honestly was the one that seems the farthest away. It just well, seemed there's, in a rough. There's, games, just later. Like an, there's games later to me that seem very far away. <laughs> Agreed. I just it just seemed like in a rough state. I guess State of Decay three seemed further away, but uh, it's it's hard to tell the game like that. But yeah. yeah I, um, next they showed Sea of Thieves season thirteen. I, I don't care about no, this story. I'm sure, yeah, I mean, let's move on. Let's not talk about. It. I'm sure. I, I, yeah, fans like Sea of Thieves. These great. We're just not. Let's do a twenty minute deep dive into <laughs> what they showed. Season thirteen. Season 13. Uh, so next game, I'm not gonna lie, I took wrote it down, but I don't remember it at all. It was called Flintlock: The Siege of Dawn. Yeah. Um, it, oh no, I do remember. It's a uh, Souls-like. 
It's with the guns. And it's like explosions. So, so I, I think this is the one. It's the one where they he, they fight the gods. Remember, there's a whole speech of like, "I'm a god and I will kill you" and whatever. It's, but I, I want to be careful here because I wasn't for sure about this. It's not a soul's like. I think it's a soul's light, which I think it might mean that it's it's one of those games where it's a soul's it's kind of, No, it's a soul's kind of game. But if you die, it's like a roguelite. It's a soul's game roguelite. So if you die, oh. you start again. So I'm not 100% sure, but there might be kind of a roguelite element to here. I just remember seeing the word Souls Light. So I don't quite know what that means, but... I know they've been show- they've shown this off before. Like, it's not a brand new reveal. No, yeah. Um, and it comes out July on Game Pass. Like, I'd give it a go. The, the thing is, like, you know, there's so many um, Souls kind of games these days and so many that I, I kind of want to play and just never will. Like, you know, Lord of the Fallen, I have a friend that wants to lend it to me. There's that Crab game that came out recently. Elden Ring DLC comes out in like 10 days from now. I just, um, if I had time, maybe I'd give this a, a chance and see if I got into it or if it reviewed really well. But there's just so many games that just like, this will get lost in the shuffle. They've overdone this. I mean, it's crazy to me that the that the series is so popular that we call the genre Souls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we don't call platformers Mario's. Um, so it's just kind of crazy to me that they that there's so many of these games and we still name them. It's like they're advertising the, the Dark Souls games. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, really, it's kind of, it's funny that that happened. But yeah, th- but I will say that this one, and there's another one later, another Souls-like game, like, like, like whatever, Souls game, that I think looked better than what they showed at the Sony State of Play. Like, I'm more interested in Flintlock the Siege of Dawn than I am in... Those two ones that they showed at the Sony State of Play. Oh, there's there's one in the Sony State of Play that looked really cool. I mean, not to mention this one won't cost any money. Um, but I, I don't know. I just thought that using guns and explosions was a cool new kind of approach to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, they showed Image of Mythology Retold. Age of Mythology, yep. <laughs> That's a typo. <laughs> auto correct. Um, do you like these games, Dirk? I mean, you probably have more to say than I do. So I played like Age of Empires 2 back on like the original. I know it has the definitive edition. I've never played any. Age of Mythology, I remember, I don't know if you remember Andrew Forth. He yep. he had Age of Mythology and I always wanted to go over and play it. And I just like I think I saw him play it once and uh always wanted to play it. Um so I, I think this is the first time I'm gonna actually use my game pass on PC and hopefully it'll run on my my PC because I would love to just go through the campaign of this game. Like I, I've always wanted to. This is like a childhood dream of getting a chance to play this. It's so. not a forever game, it's like a Oh yeah, there's it's like a it's like it's kinda like StarCraft, right? Where it's like you can play one v ones and play against AI, but there's also a campaign. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks. Was this a brand new announcement? Like, is this a remake? Like, what no, is pe- this? people knew it's a remake of Age of Mythology, the original. It's, I see. And people knew it was coming. I think this is the first time we've seen actual gameplay from it. Um, super excited, yeah. And, and it got a release date, which is awesome. Cool. Um, when is the release date? It's September. Or September. Or September. Nice. Um, and that is a Microsoft made game, isn't it? Uh. Yeah, it's published. I, it's I have to look that up. I'm not sure about the PC games. I, th- I think I think so. Okay. Well, anyways, let's talk about the next game that I think is one of the most exciting ones to talk about. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what your thoughts um, on this. Yeah. Okay. I'll go first here. So they showed Perfect Dark. Now I'm of two minds of this. On one hand, I think it shows a lot of potential, and I think it could be awesome. It could be this kind of deus ex or like, honestly, like a linear level or it could be like a, no one really knows, right? People are su- suspecting it's kind of like a, a immersive sim deus ex. To me, it looked kind of linear. Like, uh, you know, when you jump off a ledge and land on a yellow pipe, it kind of mm-hmm. looked like a line- linear levels, which I'm also okay with. I would love a linear in the in the vein but, of the original Perfect Dark. That's kind of like a, almost like a Dishonored. And I think deus ex can be not necessarily linear, but... Um, they're more like level structured, but kind of free form within the level, which which is very different than let's say Prey, which is like actually open world in a sense. True. Yeah. It, this doesn't look open world to me. No, it, it is hard to tell. To me, this looks like you have almost like a sandbox level. Like the level is you know three blocks of a city, and you kind of have to get into the top floor of one of the buildings to get a code. And like, there's twelve different ways you could do that. Wouldn't it be cool, Digger? I was thinking about this game. Like, what if this game took place in kind of like a sandbox city, like Deus Ex, 
but then at some point there's like a, a train station that you can go to and it takes you to a completely different city that's like underground and then there's another thing that takes you to another city that's like a dark city that you have to like take a jet to and you can like freely travel between the three all three have different missions and it's like i don't know i think that'd be a really cool structure for a game where it's like just three big kind of three medium-sized big sandboxes with different levels that interconnect and it's you know something like in that style i think it'd be really cool yeah that sounds I, <laughs> yeah i mean like, good idea i don't think that's a perfect dark is though i think it might just be this one kind of desert area uh, i think it'll be i think it'll honestly be level based um i i read some people were kind of predicting whether it'll be just like the original where it's like level based and you can even pick different difficulties that will have extra objectives like golden eye and the original perfect dark um I, I just would like it to be kind of like that immersive sim like you mentioned deus ex but i actually think level base would work well for this yeah i mean i i think it'd be awesome i mean how long has it been since we had just a straight up level based shooter right like i think yeah. it's pretty rare these days but um I I don't I'm I'm of two minds right like, I think it could be really cool like when you first like scan the the city of people like there's so many people that it really could be like this big open Assassin's Creed style world too like mm-hmm. this is the things that I wish we were told <laughs> um, the other thing I think about this is that it's hard to know if what we were watching was real gameplay I, that's how I, I kind of felt too like the 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 where he or where she's listening to the voice and like scanning the people I was like oh that sounds, seems real. But when she's, like, climbing the pipes, I was like, that kind of feels like they just made a cutscene that looked like it was part of the game, but it really wasn't. Um, yeah. And almost like you can you can notice exactly where it clips to not being gameplay anymore. And even the gunplay, like, it looks pretty good. But again, I kind of question, like, is that really someone playing the game? Or is that just, like, their mock-up of what they think the game will look like? It, it didn't. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if not a single thing was someone playing. Yeah, I agree with that. It's and, possible. And, I'm not not saying that for sure, but definitely possible. Yeah, and it just didn't. It just looked a little bit like pre-canned. Like there's that moment, where, especially when she like slides underneath the closing door. Yeah, it's like all kind and of I'm scripted. Like, yeah, like how does that work in an open open style game? Like, what if I don't make it? Does the mission end? <laughs> um, but that's why I think there might be kind of that Deus Ex twelve ways to get there thing. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I, I, I mean, again, I kind of same as you. Like, there's potential here and really cool ideas, but it's like, who really knows what what this game is? Like, it got me excited. I like Perfect Dark. I like the original. Um, this is a long way off, I think. Yeah, they didn't give it a date. Definitely not 2025. It'll be 2020, probably nine. I think it'll be um, like 2026, late at the earliest. I actually think it'll be 2029. <laughs> uh. No, you don't. <laughs> Um, you know Hellblade? That's a yeah. five hour game. It was announced in twenty eighteen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> I, I actually think you're right. I think realistically, I think it'll probably be coming in September twenty twenty seven. Yeah, that seems that seems realistic. Yeah. Um and I I think all things considered, this could have gone a lot worse. I, I would say like as far as uh, revealings go, it was like a solid seven point five. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I'm excited it'll be on Game Pass. I think the one thing that makes it super lame for me, and I hate this trend, is naming the game the same name as the original. Oh yeah, I hate that. It cringes me. I hate it with God of War. I hate Doom, it with this. Lord of the Fallen. Like Do, the thing. Here's the thing. Would you ever? Can you ever see Nintendo just coming out and be like, "This is called Legend of Zelda," or yeah, this is, or, or this is called Super Mario. Super Mario Brothers. It's kind of like, no, because they respect the legacy of those games. The only thing I'll say, though, is like, Nintendo has their own issues with naming. Like, new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. <laughs> like, there's some issues with that name, too. Well, it's Deluxe like, is only because it's a, a remaster. I know, but it's like, there's like, how many prefixes and suffixes can we ham fist onto this, this same title? I don't know. I think I think that's actually that's a bad example of a title being bad because <laughs> I think it's a good fine title. I, I'm just we, saying there's Super Mario World, Super Mario 3D World, Super Mario Bros, New Super Mario Bros, New per- Super Mario Bros U, New Super Mario Bros U, U Deluxe. Like it gets a little ridiculous. Does it though? Because I, in my mind, it's like we understand that the New Super Mario Bros was a style of game in an era of games. And there's New Super Mario Bros., New Super Mario Bros. 2, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and New Super Mario Bros. U. Yeah. It's like, just those four. It's not that confusing. I, I think having new as, uh, new as your game title is like 
does not it's not timeless it's a very terrible word to put with your games. sure i'm not gonna I'm not, i don't think new super mario bros is a great title but at the same time better than just calling it super mario brothers 100 uh, percent. I, I agree because now now we have to just put a year next to it forever and like yeah. the thing is you know how bad that's actually a good example what if new super mario bros on the nintendo ds in 2006 was just called super mario brothers people would just start calling it super mario bros ds that's yeah, and, and 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 now we're like so many years, we're actually more years away from Mario New Super Mario Bros. DS than New Super Mario Bros. DS. What's from Super Mario Bros. Hmm. Which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, right. Say, Almost. Uh, Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like, this you up. might want to fact check that one because that's that's 21 years because 1985 or 1985 as Mario Bros. came out, so it was, it was 21 years. So no, I'm wrong, <laughs> but it's close. Yeah, 21 to 18. Yeah. But I just mean, like, in the legacy of these games, people still talk about Mar- Super Mario Bros. They still speedrun it. It's still a popular icon, the same way 80s movies are. Mm-hmm. So I-, I really hate this trend. It's also in movies. I really hate this trend of naming it the same thing. Agreed. I it's, hate that. It's terrible. And, and I mean, even, even think about the movie Ghostbusters. They made another movie called Ghostbusters, and we all just call it Ghostbusters 2016 or whatever, or the female Ghostbusters. And in in a hundred years from now, or twenty years from now, when you're thinking about the whole series, it just makes it gross and it it disrespects the legacy. And like, I I I, 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 I also hate when, when they do fr- franchise like numbered sequels, and they have one that isn't numbered, and the next one skips that number. Do or you, Mortal it's Kombat like, One. Why it's like, even Mortal Kombat One? But that's stupid. That's so stupid too. But even if it's like I'm gonna make it up, like Saw One, Two, Three, Four, and then if Saw Five was like Saw Ultimate Death, and then it became Saw Six, I'm like, why didn't you? Call- why didn't you name that one Saw 5? Like, well, I mean, I, Mario Kart definitely did that. Because yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, like, Mario Kart 7, you're like, wait a second, have, have this been 7? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I really wish they just called it Perfect Dark, you know, New Horizon it, or something. Yeah, Perfect perfect Dark, yeah, or Perfect Darker, or, you know, like something. Or, like, just Perfect Dark Mission Q. Like, I don't know, like yeah. something. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know what, though, I will say... It still might. This game's early. I have a feeling they won't. I just knowing Microsoft and their desperate ways, they're gonna <laughs> want to try to cash in on the name of this so badly that they're willing to erase the, the heritage of a, a truly classic game that they like. Perfect Dark sixty four is a classic game. That, so the one thing is marketing wise, because let's say it was called Perfect Dark Perfect um, Project Q. What is everyone gonna call that game? They're gonna call it Project Q. And then all of a sudden, it's not called Perfect Dark anymore, and people don't like it. They're going to say, oh, Project Q sucked. And no no longer can they say Perfect Dark. You know what I mean? Like they, they like it. Well, make the game good then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just, it's just, here's the thing. This game's really great. Comes out in 2027. You know, 2039 comes around. They announce another one. Is it called Perfect Dark 2? Or are they just going to call it Perfect Dark again? Because it'll be another 15 years later. Like, probably, probably again. Like, same thing, the next time they release a third God of War game, let's say people are like, ah, okay, whatever. Then they release another one. Okay, yeah, whatever. Ten years go by, PS7 comes out. Let's just call it God of War again. God of it's, War is a, a kind of a weird one because they should have called that first God of War something, but I do kind of get how they re- have, they've they rebooted the series. But the thing is, God of War 1 is still a good game. It's like, it, it doesn't need, it's burying that, that legacy of that original game in a way. Do yeah, you know but, I mean? but it, it the really only thing does. I'll say is like because they're trilogies, you can say, oh, like the god, the original God of War trilogy, or this new God of War trilogy. I don't, I, I still hate it. And yeah, me too. The, I'm just trying to. The, the, the truth is, even even when Nintendo brought brought back Kid Icarus, after like 25 years, more than that, they still called it Kid Icarus Uprising. And in 25 years from now, when they release another Kid Icarus, they're not just going to call it Kid Icarus. Do they like? Okay, but you did know they? What, I mean? like, what about? A, isn't there the Punch Out game still called Punch Out? The new Punch Out. I think it's called. Yeah, you're right. Punch Out, but it has two exclamation marks, right? <laughs> you you would know what I. And even like you know, we go back. That's from, the one. That's the one example of Nintendo doing this. I mean, I don't love some of the Mario Party names, but that's a different story. But yeah, Super Mario Party and Mario Party Superstars. That's like yeah. The worst after after, name after name Mario Party Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten, they jumped to those. Yeah, um, I, I still think it's better off than I'm saying me too. Mario Party. 
Me too. So I just, I, I'm just, I just, you know, I can talk about this trend for a whole podcast. I really hate this trend in movies. It's not hard to have a subtitle. It's not hard to to di- differentiate. If if you're using the franchise, give it its own moniker from the franchise. Respect the original. Yeah. Imagine a movie came came out. It was just James Bond. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, the best example is just imagine Nintendo's like, oh, Super, Super Mario Brothers. It's like, yeah. What? That game exists already. But so does Perfect Dark. Yeah, it it bothers me. Okay, uh, let's keep moving through this uh, this show. Okay, we, we got so, about this forever. Again, let, let's talk about subtitles some more. Actually, for another hour. Uh, <laughs> next, they showed the D- Diablo Four expansion. Uh, my note here was another CG cutscene. Who wants a CG cutscene? Uh, <laughs> so I I will say I I agree. Out of a, like to me, that was a really awesome CG cutscene though. It like like graphically and cinematically, it was quite an awesome cutscene. Um, I think we all kind of knew it was to expect um, with this because they can't really show gameplay because it's just a, you know, an extra character. I think which I think they're going to show probably closer to the date. Um, and then just Isn't like new environments though too. And new like environment, more content. I, I think like they'll show that, but it's again, it's like it's not like a brand new game. It's just if if they show you all that stuff, then that's all they're really going to have in the content anyways. It's not like it's a brand new style of gameplay. It's like, oh, there's a new area, a couple new bosses, a lot of new loot, and a new class. But it's like they show those things right now. It's like, well, then you've seen everything. True. So I agree, but I'm excited to play this, especially now that it's free on Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably won't. I kind of got burnt out on Diablo 4 that first time I played it. <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, another game that has a little bit of, to talk about, also just going back to the original name, so annoying, Fable. God damn it, just name it Fable something. <laughs> you remind me like you remind, really, me, you remind really me of the, annoying. You remind me of those sitcoms where like the guy's like, I'll drop it, I'll drop it. And <laughs> then he brings it up again like a second later. Oh god. So my note here was coming in twenty twenty five, more like twenty twenty six. Yeah, I, I don't know. This one can go either way because they actually showed a decent amount, and I think there's probably more they haven't shown um i don't it know it looks I, great the, yeah. the visuals look amazing let's yeah. be honest i could see this um, holiday 2025 but I, I agree it'll probably be pushed even further i think that's what i was kind of saying about the release dates like there's so many 2025 games here i'm like i don't think they're gonna have all these games come out in 2025 they're doing what they have always done where it's like you know they have 18 2025 games here and four of them will actually come out in 2025 there's absolutely no way all these games are coming out in 2020. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think this is one that's more like a May 2026. Remember when, um, when they said Silk Song was coming out within that one year calendar? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with that said, I really think this looks kind of great. Um, I think it could be really good. I think it could be a real AAA game for them. Yeah, I didn't. I, I don't know if you played the original. I didn't. Um I don't really I played like a bit at a friend's house, the first one. It's kinda of like you can pick your own path in destiny stuff, right? Like it's like it's very open ended and I think that yeah. I think this will hopefully be the same. Yeah, so I'm I'm down to give it a try. Like this is a game I would definitely not buy myself, but on Game Pass I think I would actually sink a lot of time into this and see how good it is. I mean, this is the kind of game where if it reviewed well and it's as good as it looks, I, I might buy myself. It looks kinda of like a really it looks it's just visually in the Why would you buy it? You have Game world. Pass. Well, I won't exactly. I'm just saying, if it wasn't on Game Pass, oh, yeah, I, I yeah. could see myself buying it. That's what you might have said about but, Starfield. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I think the thing with Fable is that they still didn't really show enough of it. It's still like snippets. Mm-hmm. I, I still really wish we went back to this like hands-on approach. To, like, remember when E3 was like a, an actual person would play the game in front of you? I, I, I think. Nintendo does that still with some good treehouses once in a while. I would really love if they did a show like this and they said 30 minutes of gameplay coming even tomorrow or next week or in, on this date. You know what I mean? Like, show me. I don't care. Like, if this is how you want to show, if you want to show a three minute CG trailer, I know it wasn't CG, but for, for the games that do, great. All the power to you. But you only have so many minutes on the spotlight. But if you just right at the end, you said, look out for the gameplay, 20 minute deep dive gameplay coming next week. I'd be like, sweet. Now I know that there's actually something to to focus on and look at. Totally agree. I think they did do that with Call of Duty, but I, I would appreciate it for some more of these games. I think they should do it for every game. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the things that's really lost on these uh, showcases. Like they just don't look like we're they're really playing the game. It looks like a bunch of cutscenes or 
the tiniest snippets. I want to know how the game plays, and I think I don't think I'm alone in that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really want to see someone play the game. I want to know what I'm playing. I want to know the structure of the game. I don't just want to see the cutscene and the smarmy dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, they showed Frog pu- Frag Punk. Yeah. Um, so this is a. I mean, five v five. Bit of a, it's a five v five hero shooter. Oh my gosh, hero not... shooter. I know. There's a bit of a groan, but I I will say, this looks better than Concord. This looks actually to me. I'm really excited for this. As far as five v five hero shooters go, this is the one I'm most likely to play. My wonder is how because the game has like a, a mechanic where you like get a card and the card changes the gameplay of the changes something about the the fight the skirmish. Yeah. But how many of those cards do you think they'll even be? I think they'll be. I'm gonna make it up sixty, and wow. I think they're, they're gonna keep every season. They'll add more. But is I, the idea is that the idea you go into every fight with one of them, or the, the idea is, I, I, as far as from when I, when I skimmed the trailer, I think it's something like there's five characters and you pick your characters for your team. The other team does too, and I think you pick let's say one to three cards your team does, and those are the rules that happen in the game. And there's your, for example, like one of them is like, oh, the rule is everyone has a big head, so then it's easier to land headshots and crit hits. And then another rule is like, oh, like. There is no longer a wall here, or oh, like you are allowed to do double jumps. Like I think they're gonna have these kind of cool rules that you might be really good at using on your team, or might be advantageous to like oh, we can see through walls now, or something like that. Um, I, I don't know. I think this game is so it's such a unique idea. I think, and uh, but, but I'm wondering though, Derek, um, it, the, it, this doesn't look like the kind of shooter where all the the, the shooters you choose have like their own special thing. Oh, to me, it does. Okay, I mean, didn't there wasn't like the giant robot guy? And then, I, I, you know. I think it'll be a little bit closer to, let's say, the finals than it will be to Overwatch. Okay, a little more help, uh, restrained. I think there's but there's definitely characters you pick. It looked like, but it just seems a little bit more streamlined into being similar. Okay, and th- this is free to play, right? Uh, it's on. Oh, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I kind of got that impression. The I would assume. I, I would say... assume so because you really got to think about like. You know, it's competing against other 5v5 hero shooters that are free. Concord's not free, so it's going to die the moment it comes out. I, I I would assume this would be free. Concord will be free on PSN the, the, within a month of its bombing. Um, but I will say, I really like the art style of this one. I like the kind of painterly comic book, like, head exploding. with. It looked cool. Yeah, yeah. And the one thing I do wonder is, how come these f- games keep becoming 5-on-5? Five five? Why not 10-on-10? Ten ten? Why not 8-on-8? Eight eight? Is it just hard to balance? I think it's yeah, like like just team structure balances that yeah. Matchmaking. I just think it'd be so cool to have ten on ten. Yeah, that would be um, cool. But there are next. there are games that are like ten on ten, just so you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, next, they showed Winter Burrow, which is that kind of indie mouse game. Yeah, I kind of like I remember it, but this game kind of lost me quickly. As far as I know, it's kind of like a um, what's the game? Don't starve, where it's like almost yeah, it's open like, world. It's like a crafting game. I, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of crafting games. So. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think there'll be an audience for this, and I'm and kind of glad they. Sh- this is kind of where they showed a few indie games, so it's kind mm-hmm. of nice. Um, but not my kind of game. I believe it is Game Pass, so maybe for somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, they showed mixtape, and I'm seeing a lot of buzz about this online. It's kind of an indie teenager game you know, about the summertime. There was a moment where I saw this trailer and I go, this looks really cool. This looks really good. And then they started showing more of it. And I realized that it's like so heavy on story. There, I, I thought the whole game was going to be like, you're skateboarding down a mountain. And then like you're floating across a field. And like it's constant kind of weird dreamscape thing going on. I think it is but like it looks, that. But it seems like there's a lot of cutscenes. I think there is a lot of probably story. But I think it'll actually have really good kind of humor. Like it'll have kind of the same... Stranger Things kind of vibe, but more comedic, um, yeah, like I nostalgia just, comedy. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I, I, you know, the music they were piping up the music on it as well. Right? So what's, what's funny? So I was playing this. I was driving home uh, yesterday, and I just had this playing. I couldn't really watch, so I just had the whole thing playing as I drove. And I really liked this one because I liked the music. I was like kind of looking over and glimpsing. But then when I sat down that evening at home and watched the whole um, event, I when I got to this game, which I was super excited for, to me this is like the game I was most excited for out of the whole thing I watched in my car, it 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 muted the whole trailer. 
It said muted for copyright reasons. Th- they can't play this music. Wow. So I watched the two and a half minute in like dead silence. And I'm like, what the hell is that? So but, I, but I, they must have like, I guess they licensed the songs for the game, but not for the promotion. I, I, yeah, I really, I really, I don't know if I just was on the weird, like I might have not been on Xbox official stream. So yeah, the that's other YouTube be a, channels can't play that. I'd be um, very surprised if Microsoft of all companies got their music dinged. No, I think, I think it was, um, like I was watching the IGN restream of it, but it like yeah. muted that. But I was like, this is ridiculous. I think this game looks really cool. I am super into this. I'm down for this. It reminds me a lot of um, like the original Life is Strange, kind of that just chill vibe. I, I'm this is my probably number two game in the show. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one. I'm just not into games with stories, and I just those. I just want short cutscenes. I want to play. So if the game, I, I'm, what I'd rather have is the characters talk while I'm playing. Then have to sit and watch a cutscene and just wait for the game because it just feels like I, it's it feels like I'm just waiting for gameplay in between cutscenes. I like you and I are both not story heavy people. I think this game will not have crazy heavy story, but I think even if it did, I think we'll actually find this in a really enjoyable story. Yeah, I mean the art style looks great. It was definitely like one of the surprises of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Next, they showed Flight Simulator 2024, which I, I don't care that much about. Um, do you? I mean, it's cool. I never even got into the original, like the one that came out for Series X at the start. So, it it is a neat game, just kind of like play and fly around. It takes up a huge amount of space on your hard drive. I try, I tried <laughs> um, it, and I just to even like figure out the flying comfortably and to get where I wanted to go. I was like, I don't really. I, I had other games I wanted to play. Yeah, I mean, there's something cool about flying over like somewhere you're planning to travel. Like, I mm-hmm. really enjoyed that. Um, but. What I would really like it if they added to one of these flight simulators is the crashing simulator. Like I want to, it'd be really cool if they're like this plane crashes realistically, and the you know the wings fly off and they fly into pieces and they blow up. Like that would be so cool because the crashing well, they, is you really want one like crash into a building, the building explodes. Yeah, Peter. Like the the, <laughs> cra- the crashing is really really maybe not the building explodes, but at least the plane blowing up. Because right now it's just like it's just like freeze frames and then like kicks you out. Oh, it's it's not cool. Like it's it, and to me, it's like that'd be really cool to like you know intentionally crash a plane in the mountains and see it kind of roll down the hill and all I, the pieces. I just out. don't think they want to like promote that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the exact opposite thing they want to do. That's what I want. You want to buy? You want to buy? You want to buy a seven seven forty seven into a building? Like oh my god. Well, you remember that game Burnout where you had to make the biggest crash possible for a high yeah, score? I love that game. I'd love that with planes, but in a city. <laughs> This is never gonna happen. <laughs> Give enough. We need enough time away from nine eleven. It'll happen. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah. Anyways, there's this one part of this trailer that the person like they're like you can get out of the vehicle and you can take pictures and the person like takes a picture of a deer. Yeah. And I was just like, what? I'm like, you can just now walk around the whole entire planet. Like what? Like how? What smoke and mirrors is this? Like it's like, or is it just like on the runway? Because like, yeah. it, it gives the impression that you can land anywhere, get out and take pictures of animals. I'm like, that's like <laughs> implying it's a whole different game. Yeah. <laughs> I was just kind of like, this is bullshit. There's no way that I can run off into the woods from my plane it, it'll and be scare what, I mean, animals. I'm betting it'll be photography zones. Like, it's a spot on the map where you can say, I'm going to land here and take pictures. And you land, and it's like, you, you're in a little area to take pictures. Yeah, un- unbelievable. Um, next they showed <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online again. I don't, I don't care about this at all. There. Yeah, you, we can, we can, we're just, yeah, we're not online um, people. Next they showed Life is Strange Double Exposure. This looks awesome. I'm, I'm super this stoked is a for this. Brand new one, right? Brand new one, but it's a, it's a sequel to the actual first one. Oh. So, so basically, Life is Strange 1 followed these characters, and it ends on this kind of, like, wild, you have to make a choice, basically, between, spoilers, saving, like, the your best friend or destroying the city that you live in. And y- you can actually pick either one. And this game is basically you are now, if, I want to make it up 10 years later, and the whole point is that you're living in one of those scenarios, but you're able to go and visit the other one and you're trying to save both scenario, both timelines. Hmm. Anyways, I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna be super cool. Um, this comes out next year, this October. 
Oh, wow, okay. And this was a brand new announcement, right? Yeah. Well, they pumped these games out. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, after that, they showed Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. So so I want to get my impression first about this. Okay. I, you might have the same or different. I thought this game looked pretty bad. And I wasn't a big fan of it the first time they showed it. Now, mm-hmm. I thought the, the humor and the kind of putting making it feel like indie was pretty solid. I think the voice acting still feels off, but yes. Yeah, it's not great, but I, I just kind of the the quips and the humor and the kind of the the the, the way the story is being played out, it feels like indie. I will say the combat looks terrible, and the cutscenes where it's like, oh, the box slides past them off the ship, and they kind of like look at each other, and then indie punches them in the face. Like it felt really slow and like not well paced, and feels very like dated already. I just think. And the combat also felt the exact same way, where it just like didn't look fun or feel like it was a good game. I, what combat? You mean the same? They showed the same clips of gameplay they yeah, showed p- last time. Punch in the face and use the whip. I just like machine gun games. Like when they made like the Wolfenstein games, those games are like almost like Doom, where it's like fast paced, like killing a bunch of guys, sliding around, shotgun to the face. This game seems a lot slower, and like it really doesn't do anything for me. Like I, I think I'll give this game of go because it's on game pass but i honestly if i was going to make a prediction on the score i'd give it like a 75 tops yeah i think it's really concern. two things are really concerning for one they showed absolutely no gameplay and for two there's no date um yeah why didn't why didn't they lock in a date for it they did say um, 2024 for this game though right yeah they did but it's yeah. just kind of like you have six months to release this game it, it's got to be done yeah I, I, I could see this game being delayed yeah, I mean, and yet I just don't understand what the appeal of showing a big log cutscene is. It's not like you showed us a big gameplay trailer the first time. You showed us like a clip show reel. So to, to kind of be like, hey, it's a it's a story trailer. Like, does anyone care about story trailers? Like, like some, some people do, and especially for indie. Like, you got to remember that there are a lot of people that play games for stories. We, you and I, are not story people. Like a lot of people in our Metacritic and all this kind of stuff. Like they are story people. I just don't think that's what was an appropriate thing to show at this point for this. This game really needs a totally big agree gameplay with showing. I'm just saying a lot of people love this learning about a story and the lore of games. Like that's what they're into. I just, um, I just like that whole scene on the boat to me was just kind of like, so you don't get to play any of this. Yeah, it felt it felt completely flat to me. And I, I agree that the cutscene felt so slow paced, like it almost felt like a like a cutscene from like a PS2 game. A hundred percent, exactly. Like it was, it's like, like the they, movies weren't even that slow. It's like they you could, know? it's like they couldn't animate nicely enough, so they had to do like really slow, big sweeping, like you know, gross motor moves. Yeah, and I have, I'm starting to get a concern with this game because like they should, they showed like barely any gameplay. It was like like the littlest bit of walking into the room on the boat. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's just kind of like I think this game's gonna be like a little bit of walking, cutscene, a little bit of walking, puzzle, cutscene, a little bit of walking. Lame little bit of combat cutscene. Like I, I really don't know. I don't know what this game is. Do you know what I mean? Like, what, where, where's the game? Like, what, where, like, yeah. what is this? Um, and I, and I still personally am not a fan of first person for this game. Yeah, I mean, when you're first person, you kind of have to convince me why it's first person. Um, yeah, and it's done that not at all. Like, it, it's all the stuff with the whip looks like you just press a quick time event. The shooting looks kind of lame and easy. Like, I know the developer is known for making first-person games, but, like, you know, like like you said, you, you got to be able to justify why. And this game, to me, is, like, such a third-person game written all over it. They really should have maybe shown, like, a big gunplay section. The, yeah. the big, ultimately, if it's a first-person shooter, it's because you have gunplay. Mm-hmm. There's not. There's no point of doing puzzles in first person. Or I mean, I even the could. even a whip would be a hundred times better in third person. Yeah, and the, and they haven't really. It's not like they've shown this like revolutionary whip gameplay. It looks like you can only do it at certain times. Yeah, yeah, and you only whip, you like whip forward and hit stun them. You know what I mean? It's not like you're like whipping the side of a like a a water barrel and knocking it over. You know what I mean? Like it's not like there's environmental yeah. things you're doing. And it just they they've never shown any combat where you're like really fighting against more than one person mm-hmm. yeah exactly um, i'm surprised they didn't go with more action show vehicles like there's no vehicle segments it doesn't look like that's a big part of indiana jones like is there any vehicles yeah like where's the, where's the set pieces really 
Like like that yeah. like like again, you know how they in the cutscene like the ship the grenade explodes and the ship's like sliding sideways? It's like yeah. show us five minutes of gameplay of you like running through the ship as it's sliding, boxes are falling, you're like climbing up the side like show us something cool. Yeah, I mean something something makes me think that this game might actually be lower budget. Um you know, than than we think it is. Because I also think it's not only lower budget, I think this game is not coming in twenty twenty four, to be totally honest. That or I think they, I think that maybe they're tempering the expectations because it's actually not. They, they their internal tests are like, yeah, this game's not that great. Mm-hmm. It's like a, almost like a walking simulator with a little mini combat sections. But Machine Gun Games is like known for their gameplay. Yeah, and Microsoft is known for botching publishing <laughs> and games. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they probably went and said, no, oh, we don't want to have too much shooting because you know we want it to appeal to kids. Yeah. Okay. Um. And let's yeah, move on. Let's talk about. I, the next I, I game. gotta say, th- this was disappointing. I, I was really hoping that this showcase would show gameplay for this and prove why this game needs to okay, exist. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you agree with me because I was I felt the exact same. Yeah, I, I, it went from my one of my most hyped games of the year to I don't even care. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, they showed Mecha Break. This game looks kind of freaking awesome. Yeah, um, it, it does look really cool. I don't know what to make of it. I think it's Game Pass. It's next year. It's just I don't know. It looks like it could be. Like a kind of like Armored Core, but with multiplayer. Um, it looks kind of fun. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like... if this game was again on Game Pass, 100%, I, I, I give it a go, kind of like Exo Primal. I, I, I don't think, think I'd is. buy. I, I don't know. I just don't think I'd buy this game. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, but it was, it was uh, probably one of my most surprising games of the show. And it doesn't look like it's going to be Game Pass. I just looked it up. Hmm. Um,. Yeah, we'll see. It could be kind of an indie game that is whatever, or it could be something else. Yeah. After that, they showed Wu Chang or Wu Kong. Wu Chang, I think. Wu Chang. Uh, it's another Souls like. I think the, I said the graphics look good. Um, it looks and it looks better than the games they showed at the state of play. The Souls like. Yeah, this this one tied for me with the, what the best one of the state of play. Like I think they're both um, looking good. Mm-hmm. I like this one a lot more than Flintlock. This one looked a lot better. Interesting. I, I almost think the maybe the opposite, just because I like the guns and explosions of Flintlock. Mm. Uh, next, they showed Avowed. Um, so it's interesting. They still, they dated 2024. Everyone was like, why don't they have a date for this? And then after the show, they announced November 12th. So um, this is coming November 12th. Um, it kind of doesn't look any different than we saw last time. Um, I think there'll be an audience for this. I just, it doesn't look... It doesn't do too much for me personally. I don't know. What do you think, Derek? Um, yeah, like I, I go back and forth. Like I, I think this this looked the best showing of it so far. I agree. So uh, so, 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 so 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 do I think it's gonna do well? I actually do think it'll do well because a lot of people have faith in in, in this developer. Um, what's the what's the developer again? Obsidian. Obsidian, right? right? Obsidian, yeah. They made um, uh, Outer World, and I yes, feel like I feel right. like didn't they make New Vegas? Or am I going crazy? Yes, they did. Okay, yes, they did. So people have a lot of faith in them. I think this was the best showing of it yet, and you know, people were just talking about some of the things that they noticed in the gameplay, where it's like, oh, there's actually like interesting things with the dialogue tree and how you have options that look similar to like how Baldur's Gate three story options work, and the combat looked a lot better in this. Um, I think I saw some more of the gameplay deep dive afterwards. Um, so, again, on Game Pass, this game I think I will actually give a go and try to play it seriously. Um, Will it actually be good? I don't know. Like it, it could be very shallow, but I'm more excited after this than I was before it. Yeah, and I, I do appreciate how they're showing a lot of gameplay. It looks like there's a lot of mechanics. Like it's, like, it's a mechanics like, gameplay driven uh, showcase, which to- I appreciate. Totally agree. Agree with the appreciation of like it's they showed gameplay. You know what I mean? It's not like they're mm-hmm. and they're not trying to hide it with some funny clips and quick clips of the best parts. Like they really are just showing the gameplay of the game, and I think it, there's a solid game there. No bullshit. Totally. Yeah. Um, next, they showed Adam Fall. Kind of looks like a Fallout. Yeah, was there game? any gameplay of this? It was kind of a. I don't like. This is like a game I remember seeing, but I don't remember anything about it. I mean, it's like Fallout in London is the note I took. Yeah, there's like some ro. I feel like there's some robots and I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but this one, this one again, it's like one of those games where. I, 
the closer it gets, I'll check out more seriously. But it wasn't enough for me to even think about and process right now. It's like give me a in a year from now, like when Adam Fall gets shown again, I'm like, oh, this could be really cool. Like I'm not it's, I'm not writing it off, yeah. but it's not on my radar either. It really is the kind of game they could have not shown at all, mm-hmm. uh, and I wouldn't have noticed. Yeah. Uh, the next thing they showed was a little snippet of Assassin's Creed Shadows. I know they're going to show more of this uh, this coming week. What do you think about Assassin's Creed Shadows? So I think they showed a lot more today, actually, at the Ubisoft Forward, oh, or whatever it's called. I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, so from what I've seen, other people... I, I didn't get a chance to see the Ubisoft Forward. I haven't seen it yet, but um, a lot of people are talking about that this game looks really good. It was like one of the best games shown at the, the showcase today for Ubisoft. Um, I personally love the the kind of aesthetic of you know the samurai ninja. I don't really know the like feudal Japan kind of style. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't played Assassin's Creed since Black Flag slash Origins, like the ancient Egyptian one. I think I might actually get this one and play it. Like I haven't played one in a while. The animation is great. The graphics look crazy. Um, it's a cool setting, unique. That I actually I, agree. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm super actually, down for. Yeah, I, I actually think this is one of the best games of the show. Yeah. Um. And and the thing is, is like, you know, I wasn't really into the past Assassin's Creed, but it, it we the nice thing with something like Assassin's Creed is we already know the game structure. Yeah, and like so, I, like, it's one I'm, of those games. I'm not where sitting here wondering if the game's linear or level based. Like, I know this is a big open city, and I know this jungle is a continuous giant jungle. Like, and it's lots of collecting, awesome. or whatever. But I, but to me, it's like. Assassin's Creed is not something I could ever enjoy buying every single one every time they come out. But if it's a certain time period that I am into, super down. Like Black Flag, I love pirates. I'm like, that sounds awesome. I had a great time. Um, even the Ancient Egypt, I'm like, oh man, how awesome would it be to, to see the pyramids and climb all up. Loved that game. Um, didn't want to really do Ancient Greece or Baghdad, so I skipped those ones. Um, but this one, I'm like, oh yeah, super down. I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot. Yeah, it kind, of, it kind of reminds me of what, like, um, what's that game FromSoft made uh, with the ninjas? Sekiro. But easier. And a little bit like, um, I don't know, Ronin or Tenchu. Like, it, it kind of mixes mm-hmm. all these things together really nicely for me. Because I know it, it won't be so hard that I'll be frustrated. Oh, no, I think it's going to uh, be, yeah. Just, it sounds like you always just fun to see the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm act, this is, like, right on my radar. It's not on Game Pass, though, so we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, PS5. <laughs> Um, the next game was what I think is the game of the show. This is Stalker 2. Hmm. Comes out September 5th. Showed full gameplay. Incredibly detailed graphics. Looks like a really good shooter. I, I don't know. I just think it looks great. And it's it's a Game Pass um, timed exclusive for Xbox. See, I, I think I have to watch this again because my memory just doesn't... Like, I, I remember watching it, but I don't remember like being like wowed by the graphics or the gameplay. So maybe I just kind of clicked through it too quickly. Um, I'll give this a, a second look. I really don't have a, a good opinion about this one, so I don't want to say anything positive or negative. Um, if you have more to talk about it, go for it. I, I just totally don't. Um, this I mean, game. It, it's not. It's just. It's just looks really great. Like it's just really finely detailed environments, and the shooting looks like it has a good f- game feel to it. Hmm, okay. And plus, it, and plus you're sh- supporting, you know, Ukraine. Yeah, and in, in the actual showcase, like what they showed of it, it's full of gameplay, and it's also like it looks like you have a lot of um, options of how to handle in, um, situations. Mm-hmm. And I also really appreciate that it's not a bunch of smarmy ragtag group of funny uh, misfit characters. This is a very serious fictional hard sci-fi future. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it just looks really cool. I mean, I'm I'm definitely gonna give this one a go, and, it, and also it's 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 a game. It's a gamey. You're shooting things. It's yeah. not full of story and towns and cutscenes and menus. It's to play. I just think I think I related this game in my head to Metro, and I don't know if you ever played the Metro games. I didn't like the Metro games very much because they were very story heavy in my mind. Um, mm. But so I'm hoping this, like you said, is more gamey. But I, let me watch the trailer again. I'll get back to you. You mean I never played Metro and I never played Stalker One, so I'm kind yeah, of like, like, like exactly. Me, me, like I don't really have. Oh, like, There's no story. Like two hour cutscene to start the game that's what metro was kind of so i was like oh god yeah um so after that they had this uh ceo come out she's uh, this is black woman and this is the freakiest facial expressions i have ever seen in one of these shows she looked like she was on drugs and I, my note here is it's so cringe how she's speaking from the teleprompter 
her eyes, her smile. I said, this might as well be AI. <laughs> they need to stop putting these CEOs out here. It's freaky. Like It, it sounds like they're giving a press conference to a board members. Mm-hmm. And it, so, it sounds like they never played a video game in their whole life. It sounds like they're they're speaking to what they think like a thirteen year old boy in nineteen ninety seven wants. It's just cringe. They just need to stop. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they show the final trailer for Gears of War E Day. Uh, I'll go first here, Derek. I think this trailer was incredibly lame. Agreed. Um, I, like for one, see you in twenty twenty seven. Thanks for showing us a trailer way too early. The second thing is that. No one cares about a cutscene. And the other thing is they use the music from the original commercial for Gears of War, which is the... Da, Mad da, da, World. Da, da, yeah, Mad World. Mad World. And it just felt like this really cringy appeal to nostalgia. Like, extremely cringy. And not done in a good taste. Because that that original uh, cutscene was so creepy and tastefully done with cool angles and like scary, lonesome exploration through a dark city with shadows hitting everywhere. This was like, you're just playing it while these two dude bros are like helping each other out. Like it's it's just cringy and um, I just don't care. I, I, I don't know. Like show me the gameplay. Like this isn't, this isn't the kind of game where the cutscene does anything for me. And it's actually more frustrating to keep showing, to showing me more games that are far away. And I, I would have rathered just speaking about this whole thing now, like I would have rather it been more focused on the games coming soon than so many games that are so far away. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Derek, what do you think about uh, Gears of War E Day? Yeah, it's so it, it's kind of funny because I agree with you, and I think that partially just has to do with you and I not being, you know, kind of Xbox from the beginning and playing all the Gears of War games and having the nostalgia for like I don't forget their names, like Marcus or whatever his name are. A lot of people online, they said that this was the game of the show. The, it's not even, they didn't even show a game. I know, but people are so like, they were like, this is a miracle that this that Gears of War is coming back, let alone those characters. Like, uh, we finally get to see what happens on E-Day. Like, people are super stoked about this. Where, I'm kind of like you, where it's like, this doesn't really have a lot of impact for me because I'm not really invested in this series as a whole. Um, I thought, like, like you said, it's like, there's no gameplay this game is going to come out in four years or whatever. We won't hear we won't hear about it again until like late 2026, and that's when we hear about it again. And I, uh, I, I agree. Like even the cutscene is like, I don't care. Like who are these two people fighting? Is this supposed to have some sentimental thing to me? Like I, I noticed the song too. Overall, like I get why people are excited about this. Like this is kind of like bringing back. This is like almost like for some people like Super Mario RPG being shown. You know the remake. I, I, yeah, but I when know. they showed Mario RPG, they were like, "It's coming! <laughs> it's coming this year!" And here's gameplay. Here's I, a I bunch know. of gameplay. I'm just saying, like, some people are loved this. I feel the same as you. It didn't do anything for me. I, I think the thing is, even if someone's happy that this was announced, because I mean, ultimately, it's, I like Gears of War. I think it's fun. I played number five. I played number one, three, and five, and I it's a fun series. I I beat beat them. I enjoy it. Yeah, I'll but, play. But I'll play this game. Like, I just think this is poor marketing. Because to show something this far in advance, sure, we're excited now, but then nine months from now, and they're like, okay, we're doing a developer direct. It's going to be like, oh, are they going to show Gears? They're going to show Gears? Oh, no, they didn't. Nine months later, oh, we're, they're finally going to show Gears. They're going to, oh, another CG cutscene with no date? Okay, nine months later, oh, they're finally going to show Gears. They're finally going to show Gears. I have two years hyping this thing. Then they show it off, and it looks pretty good, but like, the whole enthusiasm is gone Mm -hmm. and it's just not smart marketing i actually think games like um hell dive no uh hell hellblade 2 would have reviewed better and people would have liked it more had they not spent five years marketing it Mm -hmm. five years marketing so it's like there's a failed strategy here and i think things like perfect dark had a better showing because A, they showed gameplay, and B, people had such low expectations having seen nothing and heard rumors of a disastrous development. So it's, perception is important. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Avowed has had kind of a muted response because when they first showed that, that initial images of it, it looked like this big open world, almost like a Skyrim style game, and then it became much more small scale, cartoony graphics, not, not quite the same. So I don't know, I just, I think had they not shown this, and shown us a big gameplay reveal out of nowhere, like 
nine months before it came out, or let's say they showed it in March and it was coming out that fall, that would be mega hype. Where now they don't have the opportunity for that. Like they, there, there's now no conceivable game they can announce in 2025 that will surprise us. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm, I'm like yeah. It's I mean, like it, maybe a new Forza, but that won't really surprise us. Where when Nintendo has their conference next week, we have no idea what they're showing this year. Yeah. And I just think it's a... And I also, Sony, two weeks ago, showed us Astrobot. It looks amazing. They, they could have announced that three years ago via cutscene. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They literally could have shown it in 2021 with a cutscene, and then the next year showed us a little snippet, and then the next year showed us a little snippet. And like, by the time it comes out, you're kind of like, it would have been like, okay, finally, I've been waiting three years for this. And it's yeah. not as excited. And I honestly don't think I'd be as excited for Astrobot had I known about it four years ago. Mm-hmm. So there's something very exciting about seeing all this gameplay coming so soon. Like, I, I just think, I don't know, I, I really, really hate the strategy that Microsoft refuses to stop. And it's, it's like they're so desperate during these big, big showcases to say, look at 50 games. But if you really, like you said earlier, if you really think about the games, how many are really coming even before halfway of next year? Exactly. You know? that, that's my whole point for this whole showcase. Like, is it an amazing lineup of games shown? Yes. Is it like considered one of the best showcases of all time? Sure, in some ways. But is this showing a strong next twelve months? Questionable in my mind. It's it's hard. I mean, so on, I I really struggle with what score to give it. Um, part of me was like, oh, it should be a nine with all these games, and part of me like, oh, there's not a lot coming super soon. It's a seven, but I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten because ultimately, when I think about this year, we've got. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 coming to Game Pass. We've got all the updates to all these other games like Fallout, Starfield, whatever. Diablo 4. Diablo 4. And, and then we've got um, this year coming Indiana Jones, Avowed, Stalker 2. These are all exclusives. And, well, like Stalker 2 is a timed exclusive, so it'll be on Xbox for six months or so. And then next year we've got maybe half of these games that are announced 2025 will make it. So there are things to look forward to that look promising. Yeah, like I, I would I would say the same. I give it about an eight, um, maybe an eight point five because you know like while I think the next six months like there's a lot of updates on games that I will play in Call of Duty and I'll try Indiana Jones. Like I think this is the first time and maybe I'm giving freebie marks to Microsoft. This is the first time where I'm like, oh, Microsoft actually has a lineup. They actually have games. I'm like, there there is a, a mill here of games coming out. Where I think right now I feel like Sony's the opposite. I'm like, Sony, like you haven't really shown much lately of your big juggernauts. And I feel like whether these games are big or not, some of them will be kind of mid. But Xbox showed a lot of games being like, we've we've got our guns here. So, you know, in that sense, I think they 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 kind of came here to play ball. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess... I mean, just play contrarian again. Um, Sony, we Naughty Dog and Santa Monica Studio and Ben Studio and I think Ben closed actually. Sucker Punch, um, they've been they've been working on something and we don't know what it is. And I don't when think they ben, show it. I don't think Ben closed by the way. Oh, my, okay. Um, well, when these studios show us a game, even House Marky, right? Like these yeah. these developers have been working on games for a long time, and when they show them off. They're probably going to have gameplay ready. Like, Team Asobo is sh- showed us Astrobot coming this year. And in my opinion, it's still the most excited I'm for a game this year. Um, it looks incredible. Hmm. And I, I think that's a better approach. And, like, same with Nintendo, where it's like, we don't really know what to- Mario Team has been working on. So, but, but let's say, like, you know, half these games don't come out or whatever. They're still going to have, let's say, I'm going to make it up, 12 games that are pretty solid games that are xbox microsoft games where i'm looking at sony i'm like okay you might have one more this year and you might have two next year for all we know like maybe they'll have more but i'm just saying as far as quantity um i i get what you're saying about like you know showing too early or whatever but as far as quantity that we kind of know of i think xbox is kind of killing it right now I'm sure if Nintendo showed their whole lineup for the next four years, it would, they looked like they were killing it too. And same with Sony. That's you know yeah, if Sony, like, if Sony yeah. State of Play had a cutscene showing The Last of Us Three and Uncharted Five and all yeah, these that's true, that's true. Saying 2025, 2026, whatever, 
it would have looked sounded amazing too if you line them up. Mm-hmm. But then you know, I don't know. It's it's a different strategy for sure, and it, mm-hmm. it, I don't know. I find it. I just find it more frustrating. Um, that's all. That's I just find it frustrating because it feels like it feels like this strategy with Xbox has led them into a position where it feels like their games are never actually like it feels like forever for their game to come out. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stick to an eight out of ten. But, but you're right; there are things to play this year, and ultimately, the biggest thing was COD Six coming to Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I mean that that is huge. The seventy billion dollar uh, game. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, okay, Derek. Well, is there anything else you want to touch on before uh, we wrap it up? I guess what I'll say is what game. Out of all, I know we kind of briefly touched on it, but what game is out of this whole list are you most excited for? Um, well, release date aside, just game game wise. Um, that's a good question. Why don't you go first, Derek? Let me think about it. I'm gonna probably say um, Microsoft Flight Simulator. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'll I'll probably say um, you know, I gotta say Expedition Thirty Three is kind of is really just kind of interesting Diablo 4 update. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to give it to, um, where is that game? Mixtape? Yeah, I was going to say, that's exactly what I was going to say, it's mixtape. I just think, or or uh, Life is Strange. I just feel like I'm down for one of those games right now. I think I'm just in the mood for one. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'll give it to those. Or Expedition 33. I'm going to give it a tie between Stalker 2 uh, which looks great. Gonna play it this year. And um, Call of Duty 6, having wow. it for free, playing with friends, playing zombies. Like, it's just, I know it'll play well. I know it'll be fun. And also Perfect Dark, because given, even though they blundered the name, uh, <laughs> I just think there's, I love that style. I, I really think they actually did nail the style. I love the music. I love the world. And I, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's, there's something about doing like, digital spy stuff and <laughs> just um i think it has a lot of potential and i think you know, the sh- i think the showing was pretty successful the only thing i wish they showed in that and I, I don't think i touched on it is they showed her use the pistol man it's perfect dark show us the laptop sentry show us one of those cool freaking weird alien guns like like it's perfect dark to me is aliens and this seemed a little bit more like dark agent which is cool but i hope they have that kind of weird alien sci-fi weird technology kind of going on for it too i think they will i I just wish they showed like way more shooting because ultimately that's the thing with some of these like indiana jones perfect dark like show me just mowing down 20 guys rushing at me like that that's fun yeah like it's a video game like nathan drake in uncharted shoots and mows down guys it's fun (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so, um, hopefully we're talking soon about Nintendo. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully in the next eight days. All right, this is Nintendo Bros. Pete signing out. This is Derek. See you later. <laughs>